So you want to learn how to use K-tape on your patient's feet for CIPN. I'm Elise, a cancer rehab expert, and I've helped hundreds of rehab pros start treating their own oncology patients confidently. The first step in using K-tape for CIPN on feet is to prepare your patient. K-tape has been around for decades and it's used for a lot of different reasons in cancer rehab. However, not every patient is appropriate for K-tape. It's critical to cover your P's and C's, precautions and contraindications with every patient before you even think about applying K-tape. Common contraindications to using K-tape include applying K-tape to areas with open wounds, broken skin, damaged skin, DVTs, malignancies, infections, or applying K-tape to a person who has a history of a K-tape allergy. General precautions with K-tape include skin sensitivities or insensate skin, congestive heart failure, renal disease, organ transplant, diabetes, and pregnancy. So use your best clinical judgment when you're discerning whether or not you should use K-tape for your particular patient. Once you've got your P's and C's squared away, you must ensure that your patient understands and consents to the use of K-tape on them. You must educate your patient on what is K-tape, what are the potential benefits of K-tape, how are we going to use K-tape for this particular person, aka what are we trying to do for them with the use of this K-tape, how to remove K-tape appropriately, how long to leave K-tape on, and what are the potential adverse reactions that this patient should be looking out for when they have K-tape on. Again, all of this needs to be done before you even think about applying K-tape to your patient. Once you've ensured your patient understands the what, the why, and the how of K-tape, and you've received their consent, now you can think about applying K-tape. Moving on to the next step, which is prepare the skin. K-tape should be applied to skin that is clean, dry, and not excessively hairy. Grab an alcohol wipe and wipe the skin clean where you're going to apply the K-tape. This will remove any natural oils, moisturizer, etc. that could interfere with the K-tape's ability to adhere to the skin. Wait for the area to dry before moving on to the next step. After the skin has fully dried, it's time to cut your tape. Quick pause here. If this is your first K-tape application with this patient, then you have to apply a test strip First, cut a small strip of K-tape, apply it to the area, and have the patient wear this for 24 to 48 hours to determine if they have any kind of skin sensitivities or allergic reactions to K-tape. If they don't have any skin sensitivities or any allergic reactions, then you can proceed with a full K-tape application at your next session. Now back to the tutorial. Take your tape and measure how long you'll need for your patient. I would also give yourself a little extra because you don't want to start applying the tape and discover that it's too short. As my grandpa used to say, I cut it and I cut it and it was still too short. Jokes aside, once you've cut the length of tape you need, it's time to cut the tape into the formation of tape that you'll be using. There's so many different strategies and patterns out there when you're cutting your tape. Maybe you're just going to do a band of tape. Maybe you're going to do like a fan or a like a Y or a, a web. I mean, there's so many out there. So whatever that is, once ever you've cut the length of your tape and then the design or the pattern you're going to use for tape, it's critical that you then round your corners. By rounding your corners, it's going to make sure that it's harder for the patient or anyone else to accidentally brush up against the corner and that tape to then start peeling off of them prematurely. Once the K-tape is actually applied to the patient, it's time to activate the adhesive. What I like to do is I'll put the tape on my patient and then I will rub it because what happens is that heat is going to activate the adhesive stuff in the K-tape. So by rubbing it, I'm generating heat, I'm activating that adhesive so it's going to stick better to the skin. And I'll do this all throughout wherever I have applied the K-tape to that patient. Before I show you some specific techniques for applying K-tape to feet with CIPN, I wanna know, have you ever used K-tape for CIPN in feet? 
let me know because I really want to know how many of you out there have already tried this. Now these are the techniques that I learned when I was a student working with my CIs. There are likely other techniques out there. And so again, I would love to hear who's out there already doing K-Tape application for CIPN and feet and what techniques you're using because I'm always looking to try new things for my patients. The first K-Tape technique for CIPN in feet is the diamond band technique. What you'll need are two strips of K-Tape that have been measured and cut for your patient's feet. You're going to want to make sure that you have enough K-Tape that's going to actually come up onto the patient's posterior ankle distal calf and then come around the bottom of the feet and then fit in between the toes. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got my tape and I'm measuring to make sure that I have enough that's going to go around to the top of my foot in between my toes and then come around the back to where the tape is then going to anchor on the dorsal, the excuse me, the distal part of my calf slash ankle area here. So now that I've measured it, I'm going to cut it and you'll see here shortly that once I've cut it, I'm just going to take the tape and measure out another strip because I'm going to need two strips for my feet. And if I were doing both feet in this case, I would go ahead and cut two two more strips because again, if I've already measured them, it's likely that the strips from one feet are going to measure and fit the other foot just as well. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking my strip of tape and I'm folding it over, edges matched up, so now I can round my corners and save myself a little work here. So rounding out the corners, and then as you can see here, we're ready to go. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking one end of the tape and I'm folding it over and this is going to be where I cut the actual diamond holes where my toes are going to go in the tape. So at this point I take my scissors, making sure that I have the right side of the tape where my big toe hole is going to be. As you're doing the other strip, it doesn't matter as much because the toes are relatively the same size, but I do tend to need a slightly bigger hole for where the big toe is going to sit. So I'm cutting a little diamond hole here. I'm going to cut two holes. That's usually what I can end up cutting to fit most patients' feet. And I'll show you what that looks like here shortly. So diamond holes here, again, one slightly bigger for the big toe. And then I'm going to peel the tape backing off and then actually stick that on the distal end of my foot around where my toes are. Now it is really challenging here. Make sure that the, the tape doesn't start sticking to each other. Again, with those diamond um, holes, it can get a little challenging. I do think this is easier applying on somebody else though. So more than likely, you're not going to be applying this to yourself. You're going to be applying it to a patient and that is going to make it easier on you. Once I've got the tape on, I'm going to rub the tape to activate that adhesive. Once I feel like it's nice and secure, then I'm going to start peeling off the, the tape or the backing on the other side and then gently laying the tape against the foot here. Now gently I'm going to lay the tape down on the foot. I'm actually not applying any tension here. And again, there's lots of different ways that I have seen people apply K-Tape over the years. And what I have most recently been taught is to not actually tension the tape whatsoever and then put the foot into a particular position. So in this case, I've got my foot really dorsiflexed. And again, I understand there are a lot of different theories and ideas behind how you apply K-Tape, do whatever you've learned is best and what you think is going to fit best for your patient here. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking that second strip. This is still going to be for the same foot. I'm going around those corners, again, saving myself a little work in the process by doubling those edges over. And then I will fold the tape, excuse me, yeah, fold the tape. And then I'll cut those two little diamond holes. Now, as I'm sure you've been aware of. Um, we have five toes, technically only four holes. So the pinky toe isn't going to be covered by this, but usually that isn't a big enough deal to where I'm super worried about it, in case you were wondering how that all works. You totally could do another strip where you encompass the pinky toe, but I find that the two strips usually fits my patients really well, and I don't really have to worry about including that pinky toe here. Again, I'm applying around the toes, making sure that that tape doesn't get stuck to itself. 
Again, it is usually easier to do this on someone else. And as you're applying this K-tape, I would really recommend go slow, take your time, because what we don't want is wrinkles or crinkling of the tape. As you can see here, I'm doing a little bit of adjustment because especially for patients who may have some decreased sensation, we don't want any wrinkles, especially in the feet where they're going to be walking around, wearing socks, wearing shoes, to where that could potentially cause like a pressure injury, for example. So again, in this case, I'm dorsiflexing my foot and toes. I'm applying that tape, no tension as I'm peeling that backing off of it, trying to smooth it out as much as possible as I'm applying. And then I'm going to anchor that on, again, the distal calf, um, posterior ankle area here. This is a still shot of what the tape application looks like from the bottom of the foot. As you can see, I do have a little more wrinkles around the fourth and fifth toe than what I would like, so I would try to smooth those out before I sent the patient on their way. The next K-tape technique for CIPN in feet is the toe strips technique. You'll need two strips of K-tape that have been measured for your patient's feet. Again, they will need to be anchored at the patient's distal calf posterior ankle and then come down along the bottom of the foot and then onto the toes, even onto the toenail a little bit. So make sure you have enough length for that. I'm taking my tape and I'm now going to measure to ensure that I have enough length to go over the top of my toes onto the toenail a little bit around the foot and then to anchor it on the posterior calf, distal calf, ankle area here. So again, I'm going to cut one strip and then you'll see me cut another strip of the same length because again, I'm going to need two strips for each foot that I'm doing with this particular technique, similar to the diamond band technique. So once I've cut those, I need to still round my edges, but what I'm going to do here is slightly different. I'm only going to round the edge of one tape strip each. So again, I'm not going to do the doubling over of the tape like you saw previously. I have both strips. I have rounded the corners of one side. That's what I'm showing here. And then we're going to actually cut our strips so I wouldn't round the edges of my other section first. What I'm doing here is I'm taking one strip of tape and then I'm going to double it over. And here's how I'm going to cut the strips. With each strip of tape, I'm going to cut four strips up to the anchor point. So I'm not completely bisecting the tape all the way through. I'll show you here in a bit what that looks like. So I'm gonna cut half. So I've got one strip on each side and then I'm going to cut those in half and then I'm going to have four strips total per one piece of tape that I'm using here. So you can see here, I'm now going to separate and I have an anchor point on one side with four strips. I will let you know that I do think I cut the strips a little long here, but that's not necessarily going to deter me from actually using the strips. And so now I'm going to take each strip and round the corners of each strip. Again, we round the corners to make sure that the tape is going to stay secure as long as possible against the skin. And so now I have one strip of tape rounded corners on each tiny toe strip that I'm going to use here. So this is slightly different than the, the diamond band technique I used previously. I'm going to anchor at the distal calf posterior ankle area first, and then I'm going to take the toe strips and apply them as I go. So I'm going to remove the backing of the anchor point and then use that, anchor it again, distal calf posterior ankle area, and then I'm going to rub to activate the adhesive here. Once I've done that, I'm now going to go strip by strip. I'm going to take off the backing. And again, I've put my foot in a position of dorsiflexion all the way. Again, you do you here. This is what I'm doing for this technique. I think it adapts really well to whatever you're using it for. And I'm going to then apply the tape, no tension, all the way against the foot here and around the toes. This is a still shot of the finished product. So as you can see, each of the tape strips come along the plantar surface of the foot and then over the top of the toe anchoring onto the toenails, which are on the other side of this foot here. Each of the strips, I'm trying to cover as much of the real estate of the foot as possible. And then for the toes, my big toe required three strips while the other toes really only required one to cover as much skin as possible. 
Now you know how to apply K-tape to feet with CIPN, but you may be wondering how does cancer treatment cause so many musculoskeletal impairments for your patients? If that's you, watch this next video where I talk about how cancer treatment causes so many long-term impairments for your patients and what you can do about them. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.